So, because um, in one of our discussions, like you were talking about, like why would you want to use a word that's reclaimed if it used to mean something odd and strange? Like, why? Because Olu said that it was. Um, I remember she said it was about. Um, it was like a political statement, like a stand, so to make. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think it's a political. I don't know. I don't think that it was a political statement. But what would you say to like Olu's argument there? Well, look, reclaiming the word queer is the same as black people reclaiming the word nigger, isn't it? It is a it is a, a place of resistance to say that I refuse to accept being framed in a way that somebody that is regarding themselves as the mainstream or normal is framing me as something other than that. I refuse to accept that label. So by, by taking that label and kind of making it your own, that's the politics of resistance. By, by kind of dissolving that um, description, I don't accept it, or, or I do accept that description, and I embrace it. I, you know, I mean, that was for me as a punk, was like, I already felt like a weirdo outsider because I'd moved around loads when I was at school and I'd been in three different infant schools, so I always felt like the weirdo or the outsider. When punk arrived, it just allowed me to wear that on the outside and go, yeah, I'm an outsider weirdo, so what are you going to do about it? It completely changed everything, so I really get that. I think it's really important to not be defined by other people's definition of who you are not being okay with them. It's like, no, fuck you. So good, I'm glad you think I'm a weirdo. I don't want to fucking talk to you anyway. That's how I felt about it. Didn't you say in like one of our discussions that the word queer or anything that isn't like normal, it sort of is heightening that you're other, like you're abnormal? Are you saying something like that? Yeah, but the, th the tricky thing is, is that I didn't aspire to being normal. So this is where it gets complicated. Is like, I can say to you, I am a white, middle-class, middle-aged, cis man. That is my string of labels. And it isn't how I identify. I didn't identify with that scene. I identified with people who loved dressing up and doing all kind of weird and wonderful things with themselves and each other. So if somebody thought I was a freak or a weirdo, I was like, well, yeah, good, because definitely I'm not coming to prison with you. You know, and I don't want you to come to my lovely little alternative club either, thanks very much. I loved it that they wouldn't let people in who looked too normal to the clubs that I went to. I was really happy about that. Um, in, you know, the article that you gave me that I said I just read, um, one of the things that I saw, it's like, he, he mentions about, like, grouping people and putting people into, like, a negative betrayal or stereotype, like, confining people into that one box. Um, and it doesn't necessarily explain who they are as a whole, like... It's pigeonholing people, it's stereotyping them with really narrow categories. It's like, what you like to do sexually with who? It's such a big deal in our society, whereas it could be something like, all oh, right, do you like the new so-and-so album? Yeah, it's not so bad. Oh, I really like that. No, oh, I don't really like that. I mean, you don't have a conversation with your friends where they go, oh, I really like, I don't know, who, who do you like? Into your music? You know, I'm not really plugged into that. <laughs> See, to me, as a girlfriend, I couldn't go out with a girl who isn't into music. That's almost a deal breaker to me because I'm so into my music that it's like a lot of the time when I'm in my, sat around in my flat, I'll be playing music in the kitchen. If I'm, if I'm with somebody who's like, oh, what's this? I'd be like, well, it's the music that I love. Like, it does feel like a part of who I am that is probably more important to me than my sexuality. So, but who, who gets to decide what's important and why, why are we so bothered about whether well, you like this or you don't like that? And it's not who we really are as people deep down inside, I don't think. We just fixate on the surface details and... You know, that's what you see in a, a war. That's why war is so kind of profound because if thick bombs start falling out of the sky, it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, whatever your preference is, what bands you like, anything, it doesn't matter anymore. You suddenly become very aware of the fact that you are just 
a human being on the planet hoping to get through your life all right and that's when everything kind of gets flattened flattened out flat, flattens the playing field if ufos came down now and went okay we are here human beings you know we're just going to let you know there is a t entire civilization out there suddenly i know it's the thing of sci-fi films but suddenly we would be aware that we're a species living on a planet and all that stuff that we think is so different about each other it wouldn't matter anymore maybe that's what we need maybe we need the ufos to come down you said about that is going off on one sorry <laughs> you said about like pi what, pigeon pigeon holing. pigeon holing, yeah. do you think that like I mean, this is like a really broad, broad question, but I'm trying to get the like anti what other people said. Do you think that labels are too confining and it's only it's only a small minuscule part of who we are? Like, are they really necessary because it's just so small? Well, I think it's I think it's I think where labels are necessary is something to do with security and safety, human rights and feeling part of a community of like minded people in certain ways. I think they're really, really important. So my equivalent to what your project is about is that when I was in my twenties, and I was dressed up in kind of new romantic goth punk attire, and I was terrified of being beaten up by straight blokes because they really did want to beat me up on sight. So having a couple of nightclubs that were alternative places that wouldn't let normal blokes in was important. It was my social life where I felt safe and I could dress up and have a dance and not feel worried about getting beaten up until I stumbled out at two in the morning. So in that way, being alternative really, really mattered a lot to me. But then I also get it that it becomes divisive and actually I had friends who weren't into that scene who I liked just as much as friends who were. So then I started to realise that actually I was getting a bit snobby, like my, I was kind of an inverted snob in a way. I wouldn't have gone out with you because you don't like music, was, was no point, you're very lovely, but that was my thing. So, but then when I look back on that now, I just think that's a bit, a bit rubbish really, to think that that was that important. But I think those things sort of change a little bit as you get older. They're not, they're not so important. Um, thinking of that, I remember Olu saying in her interview that, I um, can't remember specifically what she said, but it's like a generation thing as well. Mm. So like younger people, it's like we were talking about, it's more of like a sense of pride and ownership, whereas older people, they don't really understand like all the different labels that are sort of created now. Well, pride is a tricky bit, is you know, pride, should you be proud of your sexuality. I, I'm not so sure about that. It's like, should you be able to celebrate it without fear of judgment? Yes. So I get it that that's what pride means on some level, but it's like people go, oh, I'm proud to be English. I'm like, well, what do you mean? You're proud that you were born in England. You could have been born in Syria and transported here in the first six months of your life. You wouldn't know the difference. What do you mean you're proud to be English? What does that actually even mean? People are very quick to do that, like, proud of this, proud of that. I'm like, yeah, you can be proud of running a marathon because you've trained and you've done it, well done. But proud of something that you just are or you're born into, I don't really get why that's a pride thing. I get it that you shouldn't be ashamed of it, but it's like, well, well done, you like girls, well done. You like girls and boys sometimes. Do you want a medal? Yeah, it's, it's not, I don't know, it, like, like you said earlier, it's just, made a big deal out of when ultimately ultimately it's just you're attracted to one person and that, that's it yeah except that it is a big deal if you applied for a job and somebody wanted to know what your sexuality was and they went i'm oh, sorry we can't employ you because you're, you're a bit blurred around the edges bit bit by bit blurry we don't we don't want those then it would matter a lot or if your parents decided that they weren't going to speak to you because they didn't approve, then it would matter a lot. Or if your whole social scene kind of went, oh, right, what, you're one of those, you like both. All oh, right, we don't want to hang around with you. That would really suddenly matter a lot. I mean, a lot, all this stuff, Lois, is about judgment. We're so, like, obsessed with judging each other. That's all right, that's not all right, that might be all right if you do it like that, and if, if you do it round the corner, I never know any different, then I don't need to know, and oh, why do we care? Why are we so obsessed with what everybody else thinks? 
It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I feel like I'm probably guilty of that myself, though. Like, I would like to say that I don't... But you can't not be. Yeah. But that's what the that article that I sent you was about around heterosexuality wasn't a thing. Neither was homosexuality. You just did things. You did things with certain people in a certain way, but that wasn't who you were until quite recently. Why are we so stuck in this thing about identity? You know, it wasn't so long ago that Protestants were killing Catholics and, right, we're all Christians, we all believe in the same God, but not in the same way. Kill them. Yeah. That happened a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. So, how can that be a thing? What, you, you're Christians who believe in the same God, but in a different way to the extent whereby you're willing to kill each other because of your difference of how you think about that same God. It's like homophobia as well. It just... Why do you care? Why does anybody care? Get on with your life. Sort yourself out. Never mind. You don't know anybody who's like that. And if you do, they haven't told you because you're an idiot. This is totally going off on loads <laughs> of tangents. Yeah. I don't, um, how about like maybe summarising in like a sentence? Well, good luck. See if you can yeah. get me to summarise in a sentence. Um, summarise what though? I didn't really come into this prepared, but I need like... You said some good, like useful stuff, but like... The question is for you. Like, this is your project. You set off on this project with a sense of, some, I've got a little bit of a pebble in my shoe. Something's not quite right. Like, I get it from you that you're okay with who you are. It doesn't feel like you're uncomfortable with it. But then there's something uncomfortable about, I don't know, you're not quite sure where to park it. Or, you know, that kind of, I know I keep coming back to it, but, you know, hanging out in a prison scene is a very straight scene. So there's a part of you that you've kind of, you've got a foot in a world that's not entirely your world, if you want to consider yourself as defined by that aspect of yourself. And you're nervous about putting a foot into another world that maybe just seems too far down the line of a part of yourself that, oh, I'm not really sure I want to be like that, like that about it. Yeah, you've it on the head there. <laughs> you know, so then it's extreme, isn't it? So. If you just want to be in the middle and just be who you are and do whatever you want and not for it to be a big deal, then a simple version is just don't tell anybody and then nobody needs to know any different. But then why? Then that doesn't feel all right because then you feel like you're hiding who you are and then you're not all right with who you are and it's complicated, man. I mean, I don't know what the answer to this is. The answer is in you because it's your project and you're perfectly entitled at the end of it to go, well, after all of this, I've just, the end conclusion is I'm... I might just not mention it, because it would seem easier. <laughs> mm, I don't know what... I, I've, I've, yeah, I kind of don't know what to tell people anymore. Or like what... Like even language can't help me trying to express myself anymore. Well then, that's where you've got to take the ethno autoethnographic step of analysing your own thoughts and feelings as if it was somebody else's. Like, if you can make that step out of yourself and look back on your video diaries and look at your whole project as if it wasn't you that you were looking at, what would you be saying then? That's quite a tricky thing to do. Mm. Like, if I look at my... I've got the benefit of hindsight, so I can look back at myself at 21 and go, oh, God, I was actually quite pretty then, and I was obsessed with kind of insecurity. What a bloody waste. I could have had a much better time. Like, so many young people are like, oh, I don't look right in this. And then you're going to look back on yourself in 20 years ago, oh, God, what a waste of time. Now, gravity's starting to do its work, and I'm not, like, young and pretty anymore. I wasted it, worrying about it. Nearly everybody has that kind of experience. And I then, probably think that with this kind of project, though. In a few years' time, I probably won't. Well, you know what I hope when you look back on this project in 20 years' time is I think, I hope you look back on it and go, that was a brave thing to do. Mm. That was a brave project. And that was a really interesting thing to do, to look at myself in that way under a magnifying glass. And, you know, it's not maths. You're not going to come up with an answer at the end that's some nice little kind of, it's 56. Mm. 
you know, you're going to still probably be as confused as you were when you started, except that you'd have thought about it and put your experience into context and plugged into all sorts of thinking that you might never do it again. Or you might just find yourself in three years' time going, I'm actually going to have to go and do an MA in sexual identities because that pebble has never left my shoe, it's just got bigger. And then you might end up doing a PhD in it because you are putting your finger on the pulse of something that is about now and you being a young woman now in a time that is really confusing. Politically it's confusing, what the hell is going on in politics? You know, we're leaving Europe, we've left Europe effectively. Like, nobody really knows what that means yet, but it's probably not going to be very good. You know, Donald Trump's the most powerful man in the universe. He's a fucking idiot. How did he get there? I mean, nothing makes any sense. But it is going to affect you because the law of the land is starting to change around you and you might just find you start bouncing off the walls or something that's like, oh right, somebody else has made a decision about what I can and can't do based on my preferences. Then you would really care a lot. I hope you don't have that experience. I really do, but I suspect you're going to. I mean, for me, if I can try and say a sound bite for once in my life, I would prefer to use fluid. If I was going to have a term for anything, I am not convinced that anybody is 100% fixed. So I think everything is circumstantial to a certain degree. So why are we so determined to stick a flag in the ground and go, I am this. Well, well done. But, you know, everybody has that experience of something changes around you in your life. You go, oh, you can have a friend that you've been friends with for 20 years and suddenly you fancy each other. It's like, where did that come from? And I've known you 20 years and never even thought about you in that way. And then one day it changes. I mean, that's fluid. Is it like... Because there's a whole debate if it's like cultural or if it's, was it nature versus nurture? Well, who knows? Because ultimately what you're talking about is something to do with fancying. Who do you fancy and who do you not fancy? That is the root of it all. And I defy anybody to be able to explain that. If we could explain it or we could bottle that in some way that like, everybody's had that experience of like, oh God, you're lovely. If only I fancied you, you'd be my perfect relationship but I just don't. Or, God, you are a total fucking nightmare. I actually hate you, but I fancy you. That is really annoying. I mean, what does it mean? I don't know. I didn't make it up. I didn't make up the world. Yeah. Like, you can't make, you can't take it away if it's there. You can't put it there if it's not. A lot of cultures in the world have arranged marriages where it's nothing to do with whether you fancy each other or not which is kind of interesting. That's where the cultural thing comes in. I know this is going off on about another 10 times. I can't do sound bites, Lois, sorry. But it is interesting. Like we're so obsessed with the sexual romantic in our society. Oh, romance, oh, sexy. It's like, well, what if that isn't even that important? What if just about having a nice time with somebody and having a good family and being great parents and maybe that's more important. Everybody wants everything. Maybe it's too hard. Oh God, that's a depressing end. <laughs> I didn't mean to say yeah, that. It, was, it, can, it can get kind of depressing though. I don't know, I've been more confused than excited about my project. Good. Well, good. Because if it was simple and straightforward, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have had a project. We would have worked it out in week one and then you'd have nothing to do. So the fact that you're still struggling with it and working with it and kind of going, oh God, that pebble has not left my shoe. It's just changed shape. <laughs> God. <laughs> I mean, there isn't an end to this. It's probably going to carry on for the rest of your life, for one way, shape or form. So it's just a little journey along the way where, you know, you're going to wrap it up and make a 12 or 13 minute video and write some words about it and then in two months' time, you don't ever have to think about it again for the rest of your life if you don't want to.
but it is one of those things that once you wake up to things a little bit and look around a bit, it's quite hard to turn that awareness off again. I don't know. I still recommend you go to Tramfrau though, because I think it's scary for you to go there and you don't have a friend to go with to just have a little adventure and check it out, but... Like you said, I'm so used to like the straight scene. I, t I really noticed it at the Media Social the other night. Mm. Like, not only did the first, second and third years not talk to each other, but even in the third years, there's about five, six different groups who don't really hang out with each other. Like, quite cliquey, I think. Like Very cliquey. Yeah. And that's a comfort zone. And if you're in a comfort zone, that's lovely. It's nothing wrong with being in a comfort zone. It's a nice thing to have, but it is exclusive and you are missing out on other things. Mm. You don't know whether you're missing out on something that you'd think was brilliant or not because you haven't checked it out. And that comfort zone, by the way, I hate to tell you, has got about two months left in it and it will not be there anymore. Mm. And then you'd be looking back going, God, I was in that thing for three years and that it's not even there anymore and I could have done all that other stuff in Brighton I never even thought about it because my mates wanted to go to prison so I did that thing and that's what I said my daughter went to uni I was like if you just hang out with other students and go to shit student nights in Nottingham you can have a generic experience yeah. go and follow the rasters follow the black guys with dreadlocks see where they go they'll take you to some interesting drum and bass nights or some kind of cool I, I, I can't remember. It's a bit Sussex, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, she didn't do that. And then she got to the end of her degree and she was like, I don't even think I'll see those people again now. I wasn't yeah. even that bothered about them. Yeah, no, I see that. I'm not saying that you'll have that experience. I'm just saying it's, it's very difficult for anybody to do something really different from what you're used to. What LGBTQ plus means is we're very diverse. People are into all sorts of things. So if you are defined as other, then you might as well hang out with all the others because then at least you've got a little bit of safety in numbers and there's a lot, you know, strength in numbers, isn't there? But you must have seen this, even going to Revenge or other places that like, actually a lot of the, the male gay community and the female lesbian community don't really like each other very much. So even within the other scene, whatever that means, it's not like a thing where everybody's hanging out in an other happy family. Unless you're at Tramfrau. And then you get to see, oh, that's what it looks like, where actually everybody stops caring for a few hours and just celebrates diversity and whatever you do, whatever you do, if you kill with each other, whatever, who cares? But we all care. But it's nice not to care for a couple of hours. Mm. And celebrate it at the same time. Whatever, Lois. Anyway, that was not a succinct soundbite interview. Sorry, that's just more stuff to think about. <laughs> you're doing great. Just keep going. And one way or another, you're going to be forced to wrap it up at some point quite soon because you've run out of space and time.